All right, part three in the series. If you uh, are just joining us, you might want to check out those first two videos. But in this video, we're going to start talking about Western mountaineering, sleeping bags, yep. and uh, specifically what we like about Western mountaineering. And we're going to go over some of the different features of the Western mountaineering bags. And we'll talk about, oh, I guess, fill and fabric, etc. Let's start off, so let's talk about the entire range, Brad, and okay. talk about some of the things that are common to all these sleeping bags, and then let's talk about some of the differences. So here we have, if I'm correct, this is the Western Mountaineering Ultralight. That's correct. It's a 20 degree bag, yep. three season bag yep. around Montana, um, yep. and this is the Puma, and what's this one rated at? Negative 25. Okay, so obviously more down in this, more <laughs> fill, etc. cetera. Yeah. Um, let's talk about well, let's talk about these draft tubes on these bags to start with. Okay. Why don't you explain? I so, believe these have different draft tubes. They do. Them. So the ultralight is 20 degree bag. You don't need a lot of protection from the zipper. So they have a single draft tube, which has about an inch, inch and a half of tape sewn in next to the draft tube, as well as this zipper down here. When you're zipping up the bag, it doesn't catch, which is fantastic, because I always catch the, the zipper on my other sleeping bags. As far as the full neck collar goes, uh, well, hey, before you go into that, yeah. Oh, contrast that. Oh, uh, in the shot there. <laughs> walk, uh, walk us through how this draft collar, when you get to the draft tube, is different than this draft. When tube. you get to the colder bags, like the negative twenty-five, you definitely need more protection from letting the heat out and the cold air in. So this is the interlocking baffle system from Western Mountaineering. This zipper tube or down down tube is sewn in directly next to the zipper. This upper one is sewn an inch and a half back. So when the zipper closes, these interlocks, so you have two levels of down protecting you from the elements <laughs> outside, which is phenomenal. And it's, it's those details that you're gonna find in the higher priced, higher quality bags. Yep. Um, you just don't find that in, in mass produced bags. Uh, Brad, we're looking at two different types of fabric here as well. Yep. Uh, why don't you talk about fabric and you know while you're talking about the fabric explain some of these terms we hear you know DWR taffeta versus ripstop nylon one to one two to one three to one leaves okay. you know what does downproof mean etc so okay. talk about the Western Mountaineering ultralight fabric first so this is the Western Mountaineering extreme light series all of the bags in the extreme light series are pertex quantum on the shiny top of the material and the neck collar. The Pertex Quantum material is highly water resistant due to its DWR or durable water repellent. And that's an 80-20 DWR, meaning you can wash it 20 times and it retains 80% of its ability to repel water. Granted, that is just laboratory testing. That doesn't show actual use of being rubbed or inside your tent. Um, dog paws, take it right off real quick, believe me. But you can reapply a DWR. Absolutely, you can rewash it. I mean, even a dryer with after it's wet, re, re siphons that DWR really does a good job. I think in this video we want to go into the real details of how a DWR works. With the, you know, the, 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 the fistulas. The fistulas that reduce surface area tension on the fabric, or should we I, make I, that a special video? I think we just did. Okay. Well, maybe we'll call that a special video. There. Sorry. <laughs> Keep going. The inside of the bag is a taffeta. It's not calendared because the calendaring, basically what happens with that calendared nylon is they take the nylon, weave it into a full bolt, and run it through two hot rollers, which slowly compress those round nylon yarns into elliptical or kind of pancake-shaped nylon yarns. And so they're forced to shingle over one another, creating a very downproof, meaning not a lot of feathers can get through that material because it's so tightly woven together, as well as highly wind-resistant and water-resistant just by nature. The inside of these fabrics are taffeta, which means no ripstop, just a straight one-to-one -one or two-to-two -two or three-to-three -three woven nylon, something that's very, very breathable. When you calendar nylon, it slows down the breathability just slightly. So that's why the bottom of this bag, the inside of this bag, and the inside right here is taffeta. It's more breathable, and you don't need the water resistance or weather resistance on the bottom or inside of the bag. We could spend an hour probably talking about fabric technology. Oh, it's, there's too much out of even to cover. <laughs> The microfiber series from Western Mountaineering, kind of the Puma, they have a whole series of these. There are no coatings, there's no DWR in this fabric at all. 
They use such a small denier. Denier is the thickness of nylon used to create the fabric. It is so fine, and they weave this stuff so tight that just the fabric alone repels water. Now, granted, it can't sit in water, but it'll take some moisture, some condensation from inside the tent without any problem. It's completely wind resistant just by nature of the fabric. Yeah, and this is highly calendared as well. Any material that you look at that's going to have this nice shine to it that always reflects that light, that means it's going to be a calendared nylon. Straight nylons that aren't that way kind of have a dull matte finish. Calendared fabrics are all shiny. You know, we should do a video at some point that talks about how to care for your sleeping bag when you're in the field. I haven't seen anyone talk about tactics or strategies oh, yeah. for how to care for your sleeping bag when you're on a, you know, a five day or seven day or longer trip in the field. There's some things you can do every day to help out your sleeping bag. Um, okay, so I, start, I interrupted you when you were starting to talk about the draft collars. Um, talk about those real quick if you didn't already cover them enough. Uh, other than that, the, the neck collar I think is a feature that you definitely want in every bag from that 25 degree and colder temperature just because it helps seal in that heat. I mean, you spent a lot of time heating up all the dead air inside a sleeping bag, why let it out? So I look for a neck, neck baffle and these have huge neck baffles. This is, this is five inches around. I mean, it's, it's a big neck baffle. Um, how about for different body shapes? I and mean, we talked about that in the first video. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, when do you want to go to a lot, at what height, you know, how tall do you need to be before you go into a long sleeping bag in the Western Mountain area? Six, the, these are both six foot bags and they run very true. So that's a regular length sleeping bag? Yeah, six foot is regular. Okay. Yeah. Um, I personally take the six foot six and it fits me a little loose, but the nice part is I, uh, I put my down jacket or something I'm going to wear in the morning when I get out of the tent in the foot box and just to kind of keep it warm so I have to put on cold clothes and that works real well for me to kind of take up that extra dead air. Okay, anything else yeah. you want to uh, call out in the Western Mountaineering line of sleeping bags? We're only showing two sleeping bags here. We're, we're stocking almost the entire line, I believe. Yep. Um, so anything else you want to call out on the Western Mountaineering? I think we're good. I think we've talked about all the strong points. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, you know, we didn't specifically call out, I think it's on the tags here somewhere. Where did that tag go? You know, made in the USA. Um, Look at that thin snag. You know, a, a high price bag, but I think also a very high value bag. If you look at the quality of the materials that are used and the craftsmanship. And that's why, you know, if you read lots of different reviews, Western Mountaineering bags always stand out as, you know, being one of the top rated bags out there. And they're a favorite of, of all the staff here. Absolutely. So thank you for joining us. We'll uh, we, we want to work on Feather Friends next. Sounds good to me. All right, next video we'll talk about Feather Friends. Two videos in one day and your cell phone didn't even go off. I know, it's nice. <laughs> I'm doing great. <laughs> Thank you.